Birds, which made Charles Darwin sick in his own words, still continue to represent the dilemma for this theory today. The theory claims that all living things on Earth evolve from one another as the result of series of coincidences. There is no scientific evidence supporting this claim, and its explanation of the origin of birds rests on nothing more than imaginary hypotheses. Evolutionists believe that birds are descended from reptiles, yet they are quite unable to explain what kind of transition there could have been between these totally different creatures. Reptile bodies are covered in hard scales. The feathers on birds' bodies, on the other hand, as we have already seen, possess the most complex structures and bear not the slightest resemblance to reptile scales. It is impossible for there to be a transitional form between scales and feathers. And indeed, no such thing has ever been found, neither in living animals nor in fossils. Another important difference between birds and reptiles are their respiratory systems. Just like ours, reptile lungs take in air and then exhale via the same path. Yet air moves only in one direction in bird's lungs. This is made possible by a fascinating system. The front and back of the bird lung contains empty air sacs joined to the lung itself by smaller, tiny sacs. When the bird breathes in, the air fills both the lung and the air sacs behind it. At the same time, the used air already in the lung is expelled into the air sacs in the front of the lung. When the bird breathes out, the front sacs, filled with used air, exhale. The rear sacs, full of new, fresh air, also exhale at the same time, and the air enters the lung. This means that the lung is always full of fresh air, whether the bird is breathing in or out. There are a great number of minute details that go to allow this system to function so perfectly. For instance, there are tiny valves between the sacs and the lungs, which ensure that the air always travels in the right direction. As we have seen, this complex system is a marvel of design specially created to meet the bird's constant need for oxygen. And this design on its own is enough to demolish the theory of evolution. It is impossible for the bird lung to have come about by stages, as the theory claims. That is because the animal could not breathe until the air sacs, connecting tubes and valves, had all been fully formed. That in turn shows that this respiratory system, peculiar to birds, must have emerged all at once, with all its components already present. In other words, it was created. Evolutionists can never account for the emergence of such complex systems as birds' feathers, wings, or lungs. Instead, they prefer to build imaginary stories based on just a few fossils. The fossil they most rely on in this context is that of Archaeopteryx, an extinct species of bird that lived some 150 million years ago. Archaeopteryx was discovered shortly after the publication of Darwin's book and has been heavily relied on ever since. Evolutionist paleontologists claimed that this creature had both bird and reptile features. However, every single scientific discovery since has only gone to disprove that claim. For one thing, 
it was realized that Archaeopteryx feather and skeletal structures were no different from those of modern birds. The discovery of another fossil in Texas in 1983, called Proto-Avis, and which was 75 million years older than Archaeopteryx, was another nail in the coffin of the claim that Archaeopteryx was the primitive ancestor of birds. Despite all the scientific evidence, however, the idea that reptiles turned into birds is still used as one of the basic propaganda themes of the theory of evolution. Another example of this kind of deception was the fossil Archaeoraptor, which National Geographic magazine described to the world as half bird, half dinosaur. The magazine even drew a picture of an imaginary dino bird and portrayed it as clear proof of the truth of the theory of evolution. The same picture was offered as proof of the theory of evolution all over the world. Two years later, however, a striking fact emerged. The fossil was a scientific forgery, a composite of parts of five skeletons of totally different animals. After this was revealed, all the leading scientific journals and media institutions admitted that the dino bird turned out to be a hoax. The important thing is that all that nonsense was just one of the countless lies and falsehoods put forward in the name of the theory of evolution. The reason why lies have to be resorted to in support of the theory is that there is no scientific evidence at all to support it. When we look at living things on the earth or at the fossil record, the theory of evolution emerges as a dogma, whereas there is clear proof of creation. Birds reveal the same thing. Living things are not the product of chance, as the theory of evolution would have it, but are works of a flawless creation.